Hi everyone, so today I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what happens if you're trying to use unsupported media when you're doing a round trip between Adobe Premiere Pro CS6 and DaVinci Resolve. So basically, unsupported media is just any clip that will not be read by DaVinci Resolve. Now in the DaVinci Resolve manual, there's a lot of great information about working with unsupported media and also just the round trip process in general and how you can sort of streamline and manage your workflow between different software platforms. But by looking at this chart, you'll notice, you know, there's no Adobe Premiere Pro CS6 column, but there is a Final Cut Pro 7 XML column. And that's basically what will line up with uh, your Premiere workflow. So in this, you'll notice that the four things that are not supported are color corrections, long duration still images, freeze frames, and nested sequences. You'll see that composite modes are supported, multiple tracks are supported, transitions are supported, opacity settings are supported, position scale rotation is supported, linear speed effects are supported, and variable speed effects are supported along with link clip audio and mixed frame rates. Now a note here about transitions, even though transitions are supported, um, for the most part it's just going to be you know, clock wipe, center wipe, cross dissolve, additive dissolve, dip to color dissolve, edge wipe, Venetian blind wipe, cross iris, diamond iris, and oval iris, um, which, you know, are not the transitions that you might be using most often. So what I generally like to do is just sort of assume that transitions are not going to be supported even though some of them are. So to get started, because this is sort of a dense subject, I thought what I would do is just show you um, what happens when you try to import media and especially unsupported media uh, into DaVinci Resolve from Adobe Premiere CS6. So what I've done is I've created a project file here with some different effects and different transitions and different you know, editing techniques that you commonly would use just to show you what occurs if you send media that's not supported by Resolve to Resolve. So the first thing I have is a section of transitions. So I just threw a few different transitions onto here to give you a sense of what would happen if you send transitions that are not cross dissolves. The second section is scaling the video to 200%. And the third section is reducing the speed to 30% and putting the clip into reverse. Fourth, we have an overlay and opacity set at 80%. And then we have a freeze frame. And finally, a filter, which is ghosting. So those are pretty randomly selected, but just to give you an idea of, you know, if you're not just sending a clean clip or clean images over to Resolve, you know, what it looks like when it gets a little bit more complicated. So I've opened this timeline in Resolve using XML, I sent it over. And if I play that, the first thing you'll notice is that I can't see anything. And that's because my top track which had those titles um, has been imported as just black frames, black video clips. So those are actually hiding the lower tracks. So by turning that off, and you can do that right here with this button, I can now see below. But you'll notice that all of my transitions were replaced with cross dissolves. So everything um, that I brought in through that XML, any transition that wasn't a cross dissolve, has been replaced. The second clip, which was at 200%, you'll notice that doesn't look quite right. And if we go back to Premiere, and take a look at the clip, you'll notice that, in fact, it did not come across. Now, the reason that happened is not because it's not supported. It's because when you import the XML, You need to remember to check this box here, which is use sizing information. If you want to bring the sizing information across, you need to check this box and turning that on when you import the file will change that. Now, if you forget to do that, like I did here, you can actually just go to the color panel and you'll notice if I right click on this clip, there's an option use sizing information from XML. So if I select that, you'll notice it will pull the sizing information across, and now the clip is back to where it should be. 
Now, this is nice because you can also turn it off if you decide you want to do resizing within DaVinci Resolve at any time or turn it back on. So it's actually a pretty nice and pretty handy feature. So back in our conform panel, we'll go to the next section and we'll see that the speed change in fact carried over. And on our next clip, we'll see that the opacity and the layering also carried across. Now the next clip was the freeze frame, the still image. And as a remember, that is not supported. So there's a sort of media offline icon and obviously that's not there currently. And same with our last clip, since filters are not gonna be supported when you send across, it's just returned to the normal clip. Now, I'm not gonna do any color correction here or any changes. I'm just gonna send this file directly back to Adobe Premiere Pro CS6, just to show you what this would look like without doing any changes if I were to send it back into Premiere Pro CS6. So once I've exported that XML from Resolve into Premiere Pro, if I play that, the first thing you'll notice is all the transitions became cross dissolves and that the title block became just sort of this black square and I can, you know, that is the title, I can turn that on and off. Um, but all the transitions sort of reverted to cross dissolves but the sizing information came back across. The slow motion and reverse came back across. The opacity and overlay came back across. The freeze frame, the timing was preserved, but the actual freeze frame, you know, was lost initially when I sent it out, so that's no longer in there. And then the final clip Again, the filter is not present. Now, one thing to note is that even though I didn't optimize this at all before I sent it to Resolve, and now there's a lot of unsupported media placed throughout this sequence, it has maintained all of the timing information. So, you know, I put my export from Resolve under the same timeline as my original sequence. And you'll see if I sort of drag them over each other, they do match exactly. Uh, frame for frame. So Resolve does preserve your timing, which is very important. So if you do sort of have a freeze frame or something, it doesn't just remove that, it just replaces it with black, um, which can be handy if you run into a situation where you forget to just, you know, optimize a clip here or there. So obviously this is very messy and it looks like it doesn't work. But the reason this isn't working is because I didn't spend any time optimizing my timeline before I sent it to Resolve. So the key to working with this unsupported media is optimizing your timeline before you send it to Resolve. And the way you wanna do that is by moving all of the clips that you know are supported and that you wanna color grade down to their own video layer and by not sending media that is unsupported. And another benefit of pulling all of your clips onto one timeline, of course, in this example, I pretty much only have one track going on anyway, but let's say you had a multi-track edit. If you pull all of your media down to one timeline, you're not going to be sending extra data or extra information out. You know, if you are editing on multiple tracks and you have a lot of, you know, clips running over each other, when you do an export, it's going to export all of those extra frames. So by pulling it down onto a track and making it as simple as possible, you're going to eliminate the need to render out and export and color correct all of these extra frames and extra clips. But I'll cover more strategies and more techniques for dealing with unsupported media in a future tutorial, and I'll show you specifically how you can optimize your timeline and optimize your tracks in an edit.